So let's not bury the lead. The big story this week, they tried to shoot Trump again. Let's not, not funny. This... Are we the baddies? Okay. <laughs> I'm being serious now. This is the second time this happened. I said this before. There can be no fuzz on this. This is not funny, okay? It's not okay. It's not okay to wish it happened. <laughs> well, this is a <the> problem. <laughs> but wait, did Bill Maher actually just shame his own audience for laughing about the second assassination attempt on Trump? Now let me take a wild guess here. <laughs> nope, of course not. It was just a setup for a joke about assassinating Trump. Well, this is a problem. <laughs> the people, well, I mean, look, this happens too frequently. I'm sorry, this happened on the golf course. A guy was laying in wait, and it, it happens too much. In fact, besides the shooter, there were other two other shooters beside him waiting to play through. <laughs> this has got to stop. <laughs> it just goes to show who the actual insane, crazy, deranged, dangerous people actually are. Because it's become pretty clear to me that the Democrat and media's plan depends on violence against their political opponents. Then they just gaslight half the country into believing the opposite. So later in the show, Mar goes straight up Orwellian revisionist history and claims that the violent rhetoric problem is only coming from one side. And of course, it's his political opponents. And trust me, you want to see this because at the end of his rant, he says the thing. There's only one side. There should be no false equivalency here that uses the kind of rhetoric that they use. Like, I remember Trump's here, I, I dug it up, the tough people. I can tell you, I have the support of the police, the support of the military. And then he brings up the bikers. The support of the bikers, right. I think if you have the military and the police, I don't know if we're gonna need the bikers, but okay. I have the tough people, but they don't play it tough until the Democrats go to a certain point and then it would be very bad. Uh, this is the Heritage Foundation president. That's like the number one Republican. The king of Project 2025. Okay, well, that's kind of a bullshit talking point, 2025, but we don't have to go to there now, but he- A human. <laughs> <laughs> but he is, the, the Heritage Foundation is the main conservative think tank. Uh, we are in the process of the second American Revolution, which will remain bloodless if the left allows it to be. Do you don't hear that from the other side. That's not entirely accurate. This idea of, look, we don't want to have to kill you. <laughs> but if you keep winning and the country keeps going your way, we will. No, Would you not agree that no, that I is different? He's in, boys! He did it! He said it! But you want to know something that I've realized? It actually is sort of different when they do it. Excuse me, uh, the, uh, the f*** did you just say? Most of Democrats' violent rhetoric comes in the form of bombastic, high-stakes fear-mongering about their political opponents. That is then backed up by all of our institutions, including the mass media. Democracy is on the ballot still. Democracy is on the ballot. 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 Democracy is literally on the ballot. Democracy is on the ballot for this election. Vice President Harris has made very clear that democracy is on the ballot here. Democracy, of course, is, as the president likes to say, on the ballot. Donald Trump is turning this nation into Nazi Germany. You don't have a president, as you said, talking about exterminating right. Latinos. A re-election of Donald Trump could mean the end of democracy. This would be the end of America. It's way more pervasive because of the legitimacy it's given by our institutions and especially the media. Republicans want you to die was a common message from Democrats and especially Bernie Sanders when they were opposing Obamacare. And we know that led to the GOP baseball game attack by the guy that was screaming, this is for healthcare as he shot at them. Like I've said for years now that if these people legitimately believe these things about Donald Trump being literally Hitler and a threat to democracy and a guy who's gonna somehow end the country and the constitution, then you almost have to take action. It's your patriotic duty. That's exactly how they're rationalizing in their heads all this blatant lying and gaslighting and the weaponization of our systems because in their own heads, they're heroes for doing so. Yes, people on the right do say and do a lot of crazy shit, 
but compared to the left and the Democrats, it's an outlier. When people on the right or the Republicans say something crazy, it's put on blast by all the media and our institutions. Whereas when it happens on the left and the Democrats, we get jokes about it and they say that it's different when they do it. So I just wanna say there are tons of compilation videos out there showing Democrats using violent rhetoric against their political opponents. And I've done videos on them, several of them over the years. So I don't wanna repost that again, but I do wanna mention a couple examples of it, even recent ones, where you have Dan Goleman on MSNBC saying that Donald Trump needs to be eliminated or that Donald Trump needs to be shot or that we need to put a bullet in Donald Trump. That and way more are things that have been said by Democrats and the media over the past eight years. Disagree? Let me know in the comments. And if you're still here, might as well hit that like button and subscribe. I post on a regular basis, so keep checking back for more. Thanks a lot. <laughs>